He is known for being the initiator of the Social Democratic Movement in Germany. He is recognized for successfully organizing a party of socialist action. He is Ferdinand Lassalle. In the tumultuous political landscape of 19th century Germany, one man emerged as a catalyst for change. Ferdinand Lassalle, a Prussian-German jurist, philosopher, and political activist, would go on to become the initiator of the Social Democratic Movement in Germany. His impact was so profound that Rosa Luxemburg, a prominent socialist thinker, would later proclaim, Lassalle was the first man in Germany, the first in Europe, who succeeded in organizing a party of socialist action. Lassalle's fiery passion and relentless agitation brought about a seismic shift in the political consciousness of the nation. In just two short years, he accomplished what others believed would take decades. He wrestled from history a movement that would reshape the socio-political landscape of Germany. Lassalle's ability to mobilize and galvanize the working class was unprecedented, earning him the admiration of his contemporaries. But Lassalle's contribution extended beyond mere political activism. He introduced groundbreaking concepts, such as the Night Watchman State and the Iron Law of Wages, which would become cornerstones of socialist thought. With these ideas, Lassalle sought to expose the inherent flaws in the capitalist system and advocate for the rights and welfare of the working class. Ferdinand Lassalle, the protagonist of this turbulent chapter in European history, left an indelible mark on the social and political fabric of Germany. His legacy continues to inspire generations of thinkers and activists, reminding us that the power of passionate advocacy can bring about profound change. Ferdinand Lassalle, a young and passionate philosopher, was born into a Jewish silk merchant family in Breslau, Silesia. His father had dreams of him pursuing a business career, but Lassalle had a different calling. He enrolled in university, studying philology and philosophy, and became captivated by the philosophical teachings of George Hegel. Determined to carve his own path, Lassalle even changed his name at a young age to distance himself from his Jewish heritage. After excelling in his university examinations, Lassalle embarked on a journey to Paris to write a book on the ancient philosopher Heraclitus. It was there that he crossed paths with the renowned poet Heinrich Heine, who recognized Lassalle's fiery intellect and passion. Heine remarked on the audacity that seemed to emanate from Lassalle's every action, acknowledging his divine right to be bold and fearless. Returning to Berlin to continue his work, Lassalle found himself entangled in a peculiar situation. He encountered Countess Sophie von Hatzfeld, a woman in her forties who was locked in a bitter dispute with her estranged husband over their shared property. Lassalle, always ready to champion a cause, offered his assistance and was quickly embraced by the Countess. Initially, Lassalle challenged the Countess's husband to a duel, but the challenge was rejected. Undeterred, Lassalle embarked on an arduous eight-year legal battle, defending Countess von Hatzfeld's interests in numerous courtrooms. Eventually, a settlement was reached in her favor, granting her a substantial fortune. In gratitude, the Countess agreed to provide Lassalle with an annual income of 5,000 thalers for the remainder of his life. Throughout his eventful journey, Lassalle's unwavering determination and belief in his own abilities were evident. He faced challenges head-on, fearlessly pursuing justice and standing up for what he believed in. His story serves as a reminder that we too can navigate the complexities of life with courage and resilience, even when faced with seemingly insurmountable obstacles. My life will recur in exactly identical fashion, LaSalle once declared, confident in his ability to shape his destiny. His unwavering spirit and quest for justice continue to inspire and remind us that we have the power to forge our own paths and create meaningful change in our lives and the world around us. Ferdinand LaSalle, a committed socialist, found himself at the center of the German revolutions of 1848. Passionate about the revolutionary democratic cause, he fearlessly spoke at public meetings, urging the citizens of Dusseldorf to prepare for armed resistance against the Prussian government's decision to dissolve the National Assembly. However, his involvement in these activities led to his arrest on charges of inciting armed opposition to the state. Although LaSalle was eventually acquitted of this serious charge, he was imprisoned until he could be tried on a lesser charge of inciting resistance against public officials. At the age of 23, he served a six-month sentence behind bars. After his release, LaSalle was banned from residing in Berlin and had to move to the Rhineland. Despite his legal troubles, LaSalle remained determined to pursue his intellectual interests. During this time, he focused on completing his work on the philosophy of Heraclitus, titled, My Life Will Recur in Exactly Identical Fashion. The publication received mixed reactions, with some hailing it as a seminal work, while others, including Karl Marx, dismissed it as a mere recitation of Hegelian axioms. Nevertheless, the book solidified LaSalle's reputation among German intellectuals. While he took a break from political activism, LaSalle continued to be engaged in labor affairs. 
He left his legal practice and philosophy behind to explore his passion for drama, writing a play called Franz von Sickingen, a historical tragedy. However, the play was rejected by a theater manager, leading LaSalle to publish it under his own name in 1859. Although criticized for its excessive oratory, the work showcased LaSalle's talent for creating powerful scenes. Despite being banned from Berlin, LaSalle was determined to return to the Prussian capital. Disguised as a wagon driver, he appealed to his friend, the esteemed scholar Alexander von Humboldt, to intercede on his behalf before the king. Humboldt's intervention proved successful, and LaSalle was once again allowed to reside in Berlin. For several years, LaSalle refrained from revolutionary activities and instead focused on political commentary. He wrote a book warning Prussia against hasty involvement in the war between Austria and France, followed by a two-volume work on legal theory titled Das System der Erwerbenen Recht. In this work, LaSalle sought to establish a legal and scientific principle that would determine the circumstances under which retroactive laws could be applied without violating the concept of justice itself. LaSalle's story is one of resilience and intellectual pursuit amidst political turmoil. His unwavering commitment to his beliefs and his determination to contribute to various fields of study serve as an inspiration. Even today, we can draw from his example by remaining dedicated to our passions, standing up for what we believe in, and seeking to make meaningful contributions to society. Ferdinand LaSalle, a prominent figure in political activism, found himself drawn back into public politics in 1862. Motivated by a constitutional struggle in Prussia, LaSalle recognized the power dynamics at play in matters of governance. In a speech, he boldly asserted that constitutional matters are merely questions of power, a statement that enraged the liberal press. Unfazed by the backlash, LaSalle held the same lecture twice more to emphasize his point. But LaSalle's revolutionary ideas didn't stop there. In another impactful speech, known as the Workers' Program, he assigned moral primacy to the working class over the bourgeoisie. This assertion, deemed dangerous by the Prussian censorship, led to the seizure of all 3,000 copies of the pamphlet containing his speech. The authorities even went as far as issuing a legal charge against LaSalle, accusing him of endangering public peace. On January 16, 1863, LaSalle found himself standing trial in Berlin, where he had to answer these grave accusations. Lawsuits would continue to hinder his political activities throughout his life. Despite the obstacles, LaSalle fearlessly presented his own defense during the widely publicized trial. Ultimately, he was convicted, sentenced to four months imprisonment, and burdened with the costs of the trial. However, upon appeal, the prison term was replaced with a fine. Through his bravery and unwavering commitment to his beliefs, Ferdinand LaSalle challenged the status quo and fought for justice. His experiences serve as a reminder that even in the face of adversity, we can persevere and make a difference. LaSalle's philosophy of recognizing power dynamics and advocating for the rights of the working class can inspire us to examine our own society and strive for a fairer and more equitable world. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.